H1 Unlimited Gunnersville. <laughs> everyone it is Matthew welcome back to a brand new video and today we are here with the H1 Unlimited Gunnersville Hydro Fest video I am going to be covering the whole entire Southern Cup here in Gunnersville Alabama for the H1 Unlimited Hydroplane series it's going to be a lot of fun before we get started though make sure to leave a like and also hit the subscribe button this is going to be an unbelievable video this is the first race of the H1 Unlimited season for 2024. We are kicking things off here in Gunnersville for the new year. Uh, this is the fastest race course on the H1 circuit. We're set up for an unbelievable race to uh, start things off for this new season. Uh, it's going to be a lot of great action. We're going to have six teams competing here uh, in this race. I'm going to go over those teams before we get to any racing action. We're going to start off with the defending national and gold cup champion that is the u1 beacon electric driven by j michael kelly last year he took home the national championship won the gold cup in seattle and now here in 2024 he has that u1 and he is definitely one of the favorites they qualified third uh, today moving on now to the teammate of j michael kelly and that is Corey peabody driving the u9 beacon plumbing these are our teammates both a part of strong racing and Corey Peabody even though he didn't win the national championship last year he was by far and away the most dominant driver and boat last year uh, they had an accident in Madison that is the reason they didn't win the season-long national championship but outside of the that race he won every single race preliminary heat or final heat that he finished in the whole entire season last year, all the way up until the last event at the very end in Seattle, he was by far and away the most dominant boat last year and one of the favorites again this year. He did qualify third, only problem, his time got disqualified due to a fuel flow violation. So he qualified last uh, technically and got zero points and his time shows a zero, but still one of the favorites. Our third boat is the U91 Goodman Real Estate Miss Madison Racing. This is driven by Andrew Tate. This is an interesting one. The Miss Madison team last year was running two boats. Andrew Tate, why part of the team was racing the older and slower boat, but this year the team is combined into just one boat and Andrew Tate, who is one of the best racers in all of boat racing is now given what lots of people consider one of, if not the fastest H1 boat that has ever been built. Uh, that boat is so fast. And now Andrew Tate is given uh, the Miss Madison's good boat, basically. And even though I said the last two were one of the favorites, I think Andrew Tate and the U91 is the top favorite going into this season. Uh, I mean, you put one of the best boat racers into one of the best boats ever built, uh, and they proved that as they qualified first. Our fourth boat is the U11 Mercury's Coffee driven by Jamie Nielsen. This boat is a very consistent boat. While they may not be considered one of the top of the top boats, they uh, have been really close to winning a race many times. And I'm telling you this, they are, I think are going to surprise some people. They qualified fourth. Next up is the U40 Bucket List Racing driven by Dustin Eccles. This is a fan favorite boat. Obviously, it's painted bright orange. Uh, and they are a sleeper pick this weekend. They have been so close so many times, but haven't got that elusive win. But this is a really, really fast boat. And I'm telling you this, it's going to happen. And it's going to happen sooner rather than later that they get that first win. Dustin Eccles is an amazing racer. This is a fast boat and they've been close so many times, just haven't been able to put it all together for a win. But I'm telling you this. Yeah, I would not be surprised to see it happen. They are a very fast boat and they qualified second. And our final boat is definitely the most interesting one. And that is the U27 Apollo Racing driven by Dave Vilwak. Now, if you know anything about boat racing, you know the name Dave Vilwak. He is the winningest driver in H1 Unlimited history, 67 career wins. And he retired in 2012 came back in 2021 and 2022 for a few races and guess what 
for one final stint. He is back at the age of 70, which is the oldest age anyone has ever competed in H1 Unlimited for a team that has been away from the sport for six years after a huge crash. This is a completely rebuilt boat. This boat has not touched the water till this weekend, but it is considered one of the most highly technological built H1 Unlimited boats ever, driven by, even though he's 70 years old, arguably the greatest uh, hydroplane racer of all time in Dave Vilwak. And I don't think you can expect a ton early on because like I said, this boat hasn't even touched the water yet, but it's going to do something and it's going to be really fun to watch. We've covered our six teams competing here in Gunnersville. Now, before we do go watch any racing, we actually have to go over some action that happened yesterday. Obviously qualifying happened. And also we had two sets of preliminary heats. There is six total preliminary heats uh, for more today. And then that determines who makes the final heat. And the first preliminary heat, it was a barn burner of a heat. Andrew Tate had a bad start and J. Michael Kelly and Dustin Eccles battled it out right next to each other the whole heat and it was a photo finish by feet but J. Michael Kelly edged out Dustin Eccles uh, for first place. Then heat two came along and this was also a barn burner of a race. Andrew Tate, Corey Peabody, and Dustin Eccles were all battling. Eccles had the lead, but then the boat had a mechanical issue and had to shut down. And then Andrew Tate was leading Corey Peabody by a little bit, going in to the final lap where Peabody gave us a scare as he came this close to blowing over. He somehow saved it. I don't know how he did, but he ended up saving it. Came home second, and uh, the Andrew Tate U91 obviously got first place. Now that we've got everything covered, it's time to head to Gunnersville. I have made it out here to Lake Gunnersville. We have a lot of racing going on today. Four preliminary H1 Unlimited heats, followed obviously by the final heats, the championship for the Southern Cup. Along with H1 Unlimited, there is two smaller classes of hydroplanes here competing this weekend. And a lot more fun stuff going on here at the Hydro Fest. It's gonna be a wild day. Heat number three for H1 Unlimited will be our first preliminary heat of the day. In that race, we have four boats. Those are the U1, the U9, the U11, and the U27. They will be competing in this first heat of the day. Coming up on 10. Mike, you want to have four wide at the start. This is what you wanted to do yep. with this start procedure. And you're gonna get it five, four, Here we go, heat number three, Nielsen will lead him across. He'll walk has speed though on the outside. We're gonna go into turn one for the very first time, all four right next to each other, full speed. Nielsen, the U11 is in front to start and someone went through the rooster tail, I think that was Corey. And Corey Peabody has went through the rooster tail, another little accident. The leaders going into turn two for the first time. Nielsen still in front, but wait. There's three wide, Dave right there as well. Kelly in between them. And look at this battle for second in between. go and it is a three boat race still in to turn number one for the second time they now go to the back stretch Nielsen had an unbelievable start was in lane one can he hold on to this lead but he's got two of the winningest drivers of all time on his outside trying to catch him Nielsen going to the apex of the turn, and Kelly is right there. Bill Walk swinging out a little bit. Kelly and Nielsen battling there right next to each other with a lap to go. The water conditions are perfect, and they are hanging it out there. Oh, 
This is going to be an unbelievable race to the finish line going into the final turn. Heat three is not disappointed here. Where is J. Michael Kelly? He is right there. This is gonna be a drag race to the finish. Who's got the acceleration? Nielsen has a small lead. Kelly's gonna try to catch him. It's gonna be really close. I don't even know who got it. I think Kelly may have caught him at the end. Bill Walk will come in third. Peabody's still looking to finish. He'll be in fourth. Still don't know the official winner. I think Kelly may have caught him. Peabody officially finishes in fourth. Another small accident for him. He's had a rough weekend so far as he looks to three-peat here in Gunnersville. But what a race that was. We don't even know who won yet. Heat three was another amazing race. J. Michael Kelly just edged out Jamie Nielsen for first place. Uh, the 11 did get second place, obviously. Dave Vilwalk in the 27 got third place. And Corey Peabody, the back-to-back -back champion here in Gunnersville, his rough weekend has continued as he went through the rooster tail in the first turn and ended up in last place. See if he can get it together though, because all that really matters though is that final heat later today. We had some other racing going on in between the Grand Prix class and also some vintage hydroplanes. It's now time to get back to H1 Unlimited racing though. Next up is heat number four. This will be a four boat race in between the U91, the U1, the U40 and the U11. So the two guys who have won every preliminary heat so far in J. Michael Kelly and Andrew Tate, both in this one, along with the 40, who is the next fastest qualifier in between those two. This one's gonna be an amazing one. We just had a really weird start before the race. Both the 91 and the 40 went down. The 91 is smoking. Here comes Dustin, he's up and running, but he's gonna be way off the pace. As we'll take a look at, still not being told anything is changing. Nielsen is really early. Five seconds for four. Or never mind, Nielsen's perfect. Everybody's way late. Nielsen is miles ahead of everybody. And Jamie Nielsen, with an unbelievable start, a wild start to heat number two. Heat number four, what a wild start. And Nielsen was the only one that had a good start. Now Andrew Tate is starting to go. Can anyone catch Nielsen though is the question. This is the first of three times around Tate, even though it looks like he's in front, is in last place. Nielsen will come down. He will complete lap number one, and he is flying it. Eccles, though, is trying to catch him. Nielsen was the only one that had a good start, and he goes into turn number one. Right before the start, he, like, stopped. I'm not sure what happened. Jamie Nielsen coming down the straightaway to complete lap number two. One more to go. What a race for him. He was the only one that had a good start. Eccles holding on to second, but Kelly on the inside is right there. And now Kelly has taken second place from Eccles. The race is for second place, a half a lap to go. Eccles now pulls right next to him. And he is going to come down and take first place. What a race for the U11 and Jamie Nielsen. The U1 will come home in second place. The U40 goes in third place. That was a weird race. And Andrew Tate still on the back stretch. Still got a half lap to go. That is a wraps for a very weird heat number four uh, for H1 Unlimited, but all that matters, the U11, Jamie Nielsen, they were the only boat that had a good start. They were the inside lane and they dominated that heat. 
getting the win. Uh, J. Michael Kelly, I'm not sure what happened, uh, but he was way behind at the start. He ended up second, though. Dustin Eccles' boat shut off before the start, and that's the reason he was behind at the start. He got third, and then Andrew Tate, his boat shut off before the start for a while, and he was a whole lap behind everybody, and he gets fourth place. That was crazy. We have a little bit of a break from H1 Unlimited Racing. There's a lot of other stuff going on here at the Gunnersville Hydro Fest, both on and off the water. Let's see some of those things. And the H1s are not on the water. There's three other classes of boats here, one of them being the Grand Prix. They are the second fastest class of hydroplanes. The J Stocks, they are some pretty small boats, but still really entertaining to watch. And capping that off is the vintage hydroplanes. Obviously, these are a fan favorite. And along the shoreline, there's also a lot of stuff here for the people. There's a lot of amazing food booths, really cool activities, a lot of cool cars you can go see, some inflatables for the kids, and honestly, I kind of wish I could do some as well. You have the trophies that everybody is going to be competing for later. That's just to name a few things here at the Hydro Fest. Why H1 Unlimited is supposed to be getting on the water pretty soon, Mother Nature has put a hold on that. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Everyone, it's about 20 minutes later and I have an update. It's not really a good one. So we waited to see what happens and they. what we do know is a huge line of severe thunderstorms is going to be hitting Gunnersville in around 15 minutes. Even though the rest of the day's racing is not officially canceled, they are recommending everybody leave the area as these are very severe storms. We will keep you guys updated. Uh, hopefully we get back to racing. Storms are on their way and they do not look good. Everybody is evacuating the area very fast. That is heading right towards us. We gotta get back, we gotta run actually. We're... Everyone, it is around an hour since the last clip slash update. I have one final update and unlike all the previous ones, this one is a good one, a really good one. Racing is back on. Now, obviously, since the elapsed time, they are jumping straight to the H1 Unlimited Final. There was two more scheduled prelim heats. They're canceling those, and we're going straight to the final championship heat for the Southern Cup. I'm not exactly sure how they're gonna do the points since all six boats did not run the same amount of prelims, but I guess that is to figure out at a later time. All we know is the final heat is on. We have an update on who will be our lineup for the final heat. So basically what they're doing to make sure every boat had the same number of preliminary heats, any boat that ran an extra heat than the other ones had their worst finish from one of their preliminary heats taken away in points. So everybody was even uh, in amount of races. And due to that, the five boats on the front row will be the U1, J. Michael Kelly, the U91, Andrew Tate, the U40, Dustin Eccles, the U27, Dave Vilwalk, and the U11, Jamie Nielsen, with the back-to-back -back champion, the U9 and Corey Peabody. They will be the trailer boat in the final. They're letting him in the final, but as a trailer. So unless something insane happens, he's not gonna win a three-peat. We're gonna have a new winner here in Gunnersville. It is time to crown a champion for the Southern Cup. The moment we've all been waiting for. It's about time. There is Rooster Tails. The boats are heading this way. There's the U91 Andrew Tate, the U40 Dustin Eccles, the U9 Corey Peabody, he is the trailer, the U1 J. Michael Kelly, the U11 Jamie Nielsen, and the final boat, the U27 Dave Billwalk. Those are our boats. It's time. Eccles is going to be in lane one, the 40 in lane one, the 11 in lane two. They're kind of early. Two, one, mark. Close start, and we are underway here in Gunnersville. Andrew Tate has a boat speed in lane three, and they go down to turn one for the first time. Leading out, and Andrew Tate in lane three with the lead. But he's got the 40 and the 11 on his inside. Already with almost a rooster tail lead. 
The 11 and 40 though are on his inside. Watch this turn, it's gonna be tight. We go through turn number two. Ooh, the 11 got really high up in the air, but he saved it. And Andrew Tate in first place. Andrew Tate in first, the 11 in second, trying to give chase. And here comes Jay Michael as well on the outside. He didn't have a great start. Lap one complete. It's Andrew Tate. He's already got a pretty decent lead. It was a rough weekend for him, but he may have nailed it in the final heat. The race may be for second place in between the 11 and the one. But Andrew Tate in front, that's what matters. Andrew Tate, 91 completes lap number two with a nice lead. The 11 and one trying to give chase as they're both fighting for second place. Halfway through this race and Andrew Tate is in command. start finish line Nielsen I don't know if anybody expected him to be running top two but he's holding second place right now but the defending national champ chasing two laps to go Dave Billwalk in the 27 has moved into fourth place Nielsen is still trying to make a run for first place and Kelly's still trying to make a run for second place but Andrew Tate our leader with just one lap to go what a performance, and he's only got one more lap to keep it on the water. Kelly is now going to the inside for the battle for second. Andrew Tate had the boat speed, had the best start in lane three, and now just maneuvers his way around the turn for the final time. The battle is going to be for second place. Andrew Tate, though, he is going to come down to the start finish line. The checkered flag in the air. The winner of the Southern Cup, Andrew Tate in the U91. A tight battle for second. J. Michael Kelly trying to catch him, but Nielsen has it. What a performance by the 11. They get second. The U1 gets third. Dave Vilwak in the brand new boat. First time ever out is going to get fourth place. And Dustin Eccles in the 40. He had lane one, but comes home in fifth and final place will be Corey Peabody so unless something changes after the race due to violations or anything Andrew Tate your winner of the Southern Cup with the 11 and second and the one and third what a race Andrew Tate dominating the first championship race of the season that wraps up our racing action here in Gunnersville, what a race, what a weekend. Andrew Tate, uh, unless some crazy penalty happens, wins the Southern Cup. He won it pretty good. The U11, Jamie Nielsen, tried to give him a run. What a weekend for them as well. I know they would have loved to got their first win, but what a performance, second place in the championship. Andrew Tate, though, the main story, he wins the Southern Cup. Next up will be the trophy presentation. At that start, the 11. And the U91, Goodman Real Estate. We'll be right back. At the start, the 11 and the 40, even though they had the inside lanes, they were had. Even though the 11 and 40 had the inside lanes in that final heat, they were a little early to the start, so they had to slow down to make sure they didn't jump the gun. Andrew Tate hit it at full speed, and that was it. So I'm heading out of Lake Gunnersville. It was an amazing time this weekend coming down here for the first race of the H1 season. Obviously, a lot of unexpected stuff happened, but in the end, Andrew Tate 
the year after he flipped over here in the final heat wins the final heat wins the southern cup here it was a lot of fun being here in gunnersville next up on the h1 circuit we turn to madison indiana you guys already know i'm going to be there that one's a lot closer to home i camp out there every year uh for the whole entire week so hopefully i'll see uh, some people up here that are watching the video or see some people at madison that are watching this video the h1 unlimited video that i do in Madison, it's going to be a million times better than this one. We're going to have more cameras, more amazing angles, uh, a lot more stuff, and obviously a lot of unexpected stuff happened here. But that video is going to be insane, and I'll be filming every day while we're there uh, for the whole entire week. But that's going to be all for this video. Thank you all for watching. Uh, make sure to leave a like on the video, comment on the video what you thought of it, and make sure you guys also hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. So many amazing videos are coming soon. Obviously, like I said, uh, I'll be in Madison this upcoming week uh i'll be filming the h1 unlimited video from there along with multiple other videos throughout the rest of the days we're camping there and also i still got a lot more other amazing videos coming out soon but that's going to be all for this one so till next time see ya